I love Les Miserables. I've never been a big musical theatre person for whatever reason. I think I've just never felt like spending much time with musical theatre. But there are two major exceptions. West Side Story and Les Miserables. One of the first videos I ever made on this channel was on West Side Story, how the music in it can enhance the racial tensions that we see on stage, and how motivically brilliant and subtle the score is. Well, now it's time for Les Mis, starting with, oh my god, the tunes! It's like this musical is filled to the brim with great melodies. There's a drinking song worthy of a modern day Verdi. A revolutionary song that gives La Marseillaise a run for its money. I mean, come on, it's like this musical is creating its own national anthem and doing a darn good job at it. If you read the words to the French national anthem, you'll see what I'm getting at. There are striking similarities. And song after song is incredibly moving, at least when the singer is up to the task. But it takes more than just having great tunes to really stand out as a work of art. So I want to focus on just a few aspects of this musical which, for me, make it outstanding. Number one is the symbiotic relationship between text, music, and drama. This is the idea that the music will closely follow what the words or the drama are expressing. These composers clearly have a strong understanding of the power of using melody to strongly express the character's inner emotions. How the contour and flow of a melody can directly express, say, a character's pain. or how harmony can express, say, the sleaziness of a character. As the drama shifts in tone, so will the music, and in Les Mis, these changes of tone can happen several times in one song, and when the drama shifts, the music seamlessly follows. Take just as one example, the song At the End of the Day, First, when the workers are talking about how miserable life is. Then the music changes as they look with hope towards tomorrow. Then, as the woman taunts Fantine, the music becomes taunting. And what have we here, little innocent sister? Fantine responds with sass. A husband at home and a bit on the side. Then later, Valjean asks how this began, and the same musical idea becomes an accusation. At the end of the day, she's the one who began it. And you hear how she's enjoying it. And she has to pay. You can guess how she picks up the extra. And then there's Fantine's response, more serious now. It's true there's a child, and the child is my daughter. And then the climax in canon. Laughing at you while she's having her maid. At each moment, a brilliant symbiosis of drama and music. And of course, that theme comes back to haunt her later, as the man is outraged that Fantine won't sleep with him. It's a thing with a tart as it is with a grocer. The customer sees what he gets in a car. Which brings me to my second point. The musical unity of the whole. This musical has a sense of unity, and I think that's primarily through the strategic reuse of musical materials. So I don't want to call these musical ideas themes or leitmotifs. I think that would misrepresent what the music is actually doing in Les Mis. But throughout the musical, you'll find that you re-hear tunes used in all sorts of different contexts. And as we hear these tunes in different contexts, they begin to carry more and more emotional weight. So this musical isn't just song one, song two, song three, song, 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 another song. 
Instead, there's a much more natural flow of music drama as we hear memories of an old tune, a recollection here, a fuller version there, creating a sense that the whole two and a half hour piece is somehow a real musical and dramatic unity. So, for example, we think of this tune. On my own, pretending he beside me as simply the song on my own but actually when Valjean is first freed in the prologue we hear this drink from the pool how clean the taste never forget the years the waste then we hear a resolute version of it here in his name my task has just begun then later, we hear it with love at Fantine's deathbed. Come to me, Cosette, the light is fading. Then we hear it in its well-known version as Eponine's love and her loneliness. On my own. And then at last, at Valjean's deathbed, where this melody brings a whole bag of meaning with it. On this page. I write my last confession. Or take this sort of military motif for Javert, or for people being accused by the authorities. It comes in the prologue when Valjean is called. His reverence, your story. Let us see if he's impressed. Then, when Javert comes to the crime scene. Tell me quickly, what's the story? Who saw what and why and where? Let him give a full description. Later, Gavroche mocks Javert with his own motif. That inspector thinks he's something, but it's me who runs this town. And finally, later on, there's a slower, more intense version as Javert stares into the deep before leaping to his death. I'm reaching, but I fall. And the stars are black and cold as I stare into the void. Pretty cool development, huh? But the thing is, we've heard that final variant before, when Valjean has an epiphany and decides to be a changed man. I am reaching. But I fall, and the night is closing in. So it's more than just a development of a motif. This music was originally the music for Valjean in his crisis of identity. Jean Valjean is nothing now! Now, at last, it's become Javert's music for his crisis of identity. There's, I can turn. There's a kind of symmetry going on. But this time, when we hear this music, we hear it not only as the same music as Valjean's, we now hear it differently, as Javert's motif. So, over the course of the drama, this music has taken on a different role, and it makes for a fascinating sense of musical unity across a long span of theatre. This recurrence of musical material happens in other areas too. For example, the great bawdy song, Lovely Ladies, for the women at the docks, ladies, for a bite. becomes a strange song for those women left after all the men have died. The music has transformed to reflect the situation at hand. Or this moment where Valjean flees Javert, we hear I dreamed a dream in the orchestra as Valjean goes on to fulfill Fantine's dying wish. And this I swear to you tonight, there is no place for you to hide. Your child will live within my care. Or of course, there's this descending bass line, which appears in I dreamed a dream. and then appears almost identically in Who Am I? Allowing the composers to piece together the brilliant finale to Act One, where we hear the combination of no less than four songs. Who Am I? One day more. I Dreamed a Another Dream. Tomorrow you'll be worlds away. Javert's Motif. We will 
nip it in the butt. And the Thenardier's music for Master of the House. Watch a man of luck, catch him as they fall. Never know your luck when there's a free fall. Or at the very end, as Valjean dies, there's this brilliant dramatic device. which serves as more than just bringing back a favourite chorus tune for the curtain call. At that point in the drama, it almost seems to make a saint out of Valjean, an icon of the revolution, a symbol of hope for the world to come. And in the very last bars of the musical, in the orchestra, we hear the same music that we heard in the very first bars of the musical. The first bars were these. And now it's become this. So throughout the musical, there's all kinds of axes of symmetry. And this creates a much more powerful and crucially, a much more unified musical dramatic experience. It's not just song, 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 but a cohesive and powerful work. And that is why I think that this musical continues to have a lot to give, as well as a lot to teach. As with West Side Story, form in Les Mis is not just some academic exercise, but central to its dramatic power. The form doesn't just contain the dramatic content within it, the form is the content, and it shows how worthwhile it is to think about how the music we listen to actually relates to the drama on stage in musical theatre. In my limited experience, these two musicals shine out as exemplary beacons. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this work and would like to support what I do, or to buy me a coffee to say thank you, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash inside the score. I really do appreciate any contributions as it does help me to continue making content like this. Do subscribe to this channel if you want to see more like this and let me know in the comments what musical theatre experiences you've really enjoyed and the musicals which you think really exemplify a symbiotic relationship between music and drama. Again, thanks very much and I'll see you soon.